Welcome to Alpha Kappa Psi's webinar titled Enhancing Your Chapter's Alumni Relations. This webinar is a part of the Chapter Operations Series. My name is Mackenzie Lauka and I serve AK Psi as the Associate Director of Education. I'll be your webcast producer. Before we dive into the content, I would like to review the web-based features available to you. This webinar will be advanced remotely, but at the bottom of your screen, there are multiple application widgets you can use throughout the program. I encourage you to utilize the widgets to download additional resources, connect with other attendees during the presentation, and share highlights via social media. A copy of the slide deck and other additional materials are available in the resource, legit, resource list widget that looks like a green folder. The group chat is available for you to interact with other attendees and the presenter during the presentation. When posting, it will share your first name and last initial, but be sure to also mention your chapter or university. If you have any technical difficulty, please click on the help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers most common technical issues. Additionally, each of the windows on your screen are also able to be resized, moved, and adjusted to fit your individual learning need. At the end of the program, I'll explain how you can ask a question to our panelists, but if you have questions throughout the program, you can launch the Q&A widget to submit your question. Your questions will be asked at the end of the program in the order they are received. Be sure to also check out our social media content. Portions of today's program will be tweeted using the hashtag AKSIChat. You can follow along using the Twitter widget in the menu dock at the bottom of the screen, as well as post highlights to your own Twitter feed using the hashtag. You may also find some valuable resources on the AKSI blog, Facebook page, Instagram feed, LinkedIn page, Twitter feed, and our YouTube channel, each of which can be accessed from the AKSI.org homepage. Alumni are the largest segment of AKSI's membership and are an important resource to student members. They have time, talent, and treasure to offer, but it doesn't come without work from the student chapters. Learn how to leverage your alumni strategy to develop relationships that are mutually beneficial. In addition to covering these topics, we'll use time for your questions and comments on the subject matter. For our program today, we have one presenter who's going to provide guidance and support while also provoking thoughts and awareness so you walk away from today's program with new insight on the topic. At this point, I'd like to introduce our presenter, Mike Dickerson. Mike Dickerson is currently the fraternity's executive vice president and helps lead the fraternity ritual team. He was initiated into the Beta Xi chapter of Virginia Tech in 2004, where he graduated with degrees in business management and political science. After graduation, Mike was appointed the founding chapter advisor to the colony at the University of Maryland. He later was the founding CA at both the George Washington University and University of Delaware, while serving concurrently as a section director. Mike was elected Mideast Regional Director in 2009, re-elected in 2011, and appointed by the Board of Directors as the final Mideast RD later that year. After five years of service managing the largest region in the history of AKSI, he was appointed as the inaugural Area 3 Vice President in 2014, and elected as the fraternity's fifth Executive Vice President in 2015. He is also the recipient of both a Bronze and Silver Distinguished Service Award. Professionally, Mike is a Senior Manager for the United States Federal Government in the National Security Sector. Prior to joining the government, Mike was employed by Booz Allen Hamilton, a management consulting firm located in Northern Virginia for 12 years. In his spare time, Mike provides leadership seminars to DC area young professionals and cheers on the hype hokies. Now to get started with the presentation, I'll hand it off to Mike. Thanks, Mackenzie. Now before we start talking about how chapters can leverage their alumni relationships, it's a good idea to understand the sheer amount of alumni in AKSI. There are nearly 240,000 initiated members worldwide, and most of them are alumni members. In fact, there are far more alumni members than there are collegiate members. And you all on the call are going to spend the greater part of your life as an alumni. It is said time and time again that membership doesn't end after graduation, aka status for life. But I think it often gets overlooked, and we lose a great deal of our members after graduation for various reasons. Membership in AKSI is truly lifelong and is not over after four years of college. The difference is that the focus and opportunities available to brothers change. Being a student member is the, the traditional AKSI experience that people often think about, being going to chapter meetings, hosting and attending events, and developing relationships with other brothers. But think about why you first joined AKSI. For most people, the reasons are professional development and to meet new people. Neither of these are restricted to being a collegiate member, nor are these wants ever really fulfilled. We can always further develop ourselves professionally, and there are always new people to meet. Both of these are opportunities still available as an alumni member, which should continue to be fostered. So tonight we talk about how chapters can develop these relationships. Keep these thoughts in mind. 
is when you are trying to develop these relations, it's important to remember their wants and needs and how you can best fulfill them. So when it comes to staying involved as an alumni member, there are lots of opportunities available to fit every lifestyle, whether you want to be heavily involved or just touch and go as it suits your schedule. Know that no amount of staying involved is too little. And we in AKSI leadership understand that there are points in alumni's lives that might make it difficult to stay involved. I think this is the greatest fact of alumni membership. It's tailored to you, and you can come and go in your level of involvement as your priorities in life change. Student chapters need to understand all the different opportunities available to alumni, not just to understand the different directions an alumnus may be pulled in, but also to educate their members to take advantage of all the opportunities once they do graduate. With that, there are two different levels of involvement for alumni, the fraternity level and the chapter level. At the fraternity level, the easiest thing to do is donate to the foundation or become a life loyal member. AKSI would not be able to function if it weren't for donations from its alumni. And becoming a life loyal member is a great opportunity to give back to the organization and declare your pride as a member. As an organization, we are continuing to add benefits to the program, such as discounts for fraternity programs, like TBLI and convention, and a lifetime subscription to the diary. Alumni are also able to join alumni chapters, which I directly oversee as EVP. Alumni chapters are an opportunity to connect with other brothers in the area you live in, whether it be in the area you went to school or one you recently moved to. And while alumni chapters have the same rights as student chapters, the requirements are different and minimal, especially since there's no requirement for recruitment of pledges and initiation of new members. While some alumni chapters operate similar to student chapters, hosting events throughout the year. Some are more laid back, only hosting a few events a year instead of focusing more on the social side and serving as a friendship group of like-minded individuals. Like student chapters, alumni chapters take on their own identity and provide new opportunities for networking. We have alumni chapters based on geography and alumni chapters which are specifically targeted to the alumni of a student chapter, like Central Washington University, University of Florida, and Virginia Tech. If you feel you have something to offer aside from money, a skill or a knowledge that you want to share, you can be a presenter for the fraternity either at the chapter level or PBLI or convention. The structure of our educational programs are continuously evolving to best suit the needs of its members. But one thing we will always need are knowledgeable people to share their skills with each other, whether it be through an in-person program or webinar like this. These opportunities only require a set amount of time and could be a one-time event or more frequent depending on your comfort level and availability. Now, if you have the bandwidth and the passion to do so, you can join a regional management team. These are the fraternity volunteers that are the lifeblood of the organization. Now, this can take up a great amount of time depending on the position and how involved with it you choose to be, but these can also be the most rewarding. These positions are chapter advisors, chapter advisory board members, section directors, regional managers, and regional directors. Each of these roles has the same goal, to help our student chapters reach their goals and be successful, each taking from it a different area, whether it be assisting in a specific area of chapter operations, being hands-on and attending events and meetings, or having a managerial role and being there for support. Now, while these roles intentionally are designed to assist student chapters, Alumni are getting the benefit of professional development and gaining skills in mentoring, leadership, management, and conflict resolution without even realizing it. Other opportunities to give back on a more localized scale take place at the chapter level, which is where we're going to focus for the remainder of this presentation tonight. The chapters are often looking for mentors from members and pledges, or speakers to come present to their membership or their college. This is a great opportunity for alumni members to take advantage of as it not only helps the chapter, but helps with their own professional development and networking we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. Alumni are also expected to help out during rituals, which can take on a different meaning when you're coming at it after many years later and with a new perspective. Being part of rituals is a great reminder of what our organization stands for and why it's important to stay involved. But keep in mind, you aren't limited to only assisting your home chapter where you were initiated. If you move to a different city and still want to stay involved, 
there's likely a student chapter in the area that you're in that would benefit from your assistance and willingness to be involved. So if you need help finding out who to contact, let us know. We can help you get in touch with a chapter in the area. So what this all boils down to is if you want to remain involved, there's an opportunity to do so. And if you aren't sure where to start, just ask. And we'll find the right fit for you. Now, while alumni and members should want to stay involved, oftentimes it's really hard for student chapters to stay connected with their alumni and get them to come back for their events and speaking opportunities. What's important for student chapters to remember is that not the, it's not all just the alumni to do the work. If the chapter wants the alumni to be involved, they need to put forth the effort in fostering the relationships and maintaining that connection. If you don't give your alumni reason to come back and show them you want them to return, then why will they? So we're going to run a poll right now. Answer the poll on the screen. And if your chapter does something not listed, share it in the group chat for everyone to see. But go ahead and take a second now to answer the poll and hit submit. All right, another two seconds, and we'll go ahead and close it and then take a look at the results. All right. Nice. I like to see that very few chapters actually don't talk to our alumni, so thank you, everyone, for, for answering that. So the first place to stay connected with your chapter's alumni is maintaining a database. And this can be as simple as an Excel spreadsheet or something really complicated like an access database. Most likely, the people who are going to want to help your chapter will be the people who were initiated into that same chapter. They'll feel a connection to the school and the chapter members, likely even knowing some of the current members if they're younger alumni. By keeping a database or a roster or a list and frequently reaching out to your alumni with updates about their home chapter, you can continue to let them know that you want them to come back and they're always welcome. You can't reach out to them if you don't have a way to contact them. However, that's why it's important to get contact information from your graduating seniors and keep the information updated as people move throughout their lives. It's also important that when you get those email addresses that you don't get .edu addresses because most universities actually delete those after graduation. And this database can be as simple as an Excel spreadsheet with the contact information or as advanced as using professional software, like we just talked about. So I bring this up again because this could be a great opportunity for some of your chapter's IT majors to help with designing something for your chapter if you don't already have one. Now, once you have a database and a group of alumni to reach out to, you need to stay in contact. The worst way to try to develop a relationship is to only reach out when you need something. If you only send them an email to ask for a donation to your chapter, they're going to quickly lose interest. Instead, you want to focus on what they might be interested in. You want them to hear AKSI and remember their good times as a student member, the memories they made and the brothers they met. So considering hosting events and sharing information that will give them opportunities to reconnect with their pledge brothers and current chapter brothers, as well as expand their network. By reminding them of the value of the organization, alumni will be more likely to help out when you ask and even reach out to you to give back if you play your cards right. Another key area that student chapters sometimes forget about when looking at to develop their alumni relations is to reach out to any local alumni chapters in the area. We alluded to them earlier, and these are groups of people who have already expressed they want to remain connected to AKSI through joining a local alumni chapter. And they're often people you aren't already connected to, meaning brothers from other parts of the world that have moved to the area. These alumni members are a great opportunity to get involved with student chapters and provide opportunities to your current members to meet more people and share in the brotherhood. But keep in mind, as already mentioned, the student chapters and alumni chapters are very different in the way they're run and the requirements they have. Just because someone is a member of an alumni chapter doesn't mean they're interested in attending all of your events or even wants to be on your local chapter's newsletter distribution. So make sure when you reach out, you express a genuine interest in having them at your events but you really need to not expect anything in return. 
while not all alumni members will be interested, if you get a few individuals who are willing to help your chapter through being a speaker, a mentor, or donating to a cause, that's a success. So move on to the next slide. All right. So in order to foster the relationship, chapters need to be communicating with their alumni frequently. So no matter what event or opportunity you're presenting to them, they first need to know about it, and secondly, need enough time to plan it. Alumni lead busy lives with full-time jobs, volunteering, families, and other obligations that will come before sitting your chapter. So honestly, if you're inviting your alumni back for a court of honor or a mid-court or a ritual with a week's notice, and it's not in the same city, that's not enough time. You have to budget at least two or three weeks at minimum to let alumni know when events are happening because they have to plan for it. If they have childcare duties or they have work, especially if it's an event during the week, they have to plan around it. You also need to remember that, especially given the age of alumni from recent graduates to very, very senior, it's important to remember that they all are going to be interested in getting the same information or receiving it in the same way. So for example, a recent graduate might be interested in who's been paired as bigs and littles because they might still have friends in the chapter. And they might go on Facebook or LinkedIn or something else, social media, for that information. An older alum, however, who graduated back in the 1980s when I was born, is not likely to be interested in who's and who's little and might not want to get notifications from the chapter on their news feeds. Or they might not even have social media. When we installed or reinstalled the George Washington chapter at the BMU chapter back in 2007, I'm sorry, 2008, there were alums from the 40s and 50s who were still alive that we couldn't reach outside of literal snail mail. So the U.S. Post Office was sending them information about the chapter because they didn't have email. Now these older alumni, or any alumni really, may be interested in reading about a fellow alumnus that was recognized with an award, or someone who got married and had children or reading about other life events about brothers they know from when they were in the chapter. So for these reasons, it's important to not only vary your content, but also the ways you communicate with each of your alumni. Like I said, the older your chapter is, the more diverse you need to make your communications. So I'm looking at the list of chapters we have on right now. I see there's Delta Zeta on here, University of Richmond. They're a recharter. I know Delta Zeta alums are decades old. Same with Alpha Beta out on the West Coast. So you guys need to vary how you're doing your communications. So a lot of you mentioned newsletters, and those are a great, great way and easy way to communicate with alumni. You can send out once a month, once a semester, or whatever your chapter finds works best for you. They can be digital or in print. It's obviously cheaper in digital. You can range in length and vary in content. So if it's a little longer in length, you can include content that will be relevant for everyone that alumni can pick and choose to read. If it's shorter, consider alternating the content to be relevant to everyone or making multiple versions of the newsletter to send in different clusters of alumni based on their preferences. Examples of content to include are chapter spotlights on events the chapter has, awards that the chapter has received, pledge class information, upcoming dates of events and rituals, we talked about heads up earlier, member spotlights on brothers who have gotten jobs or internships, and fellow alumni who have gotten recognition in their field. If you think something might be of interest to your alumni, be sure to share it with them. If your chapter does opt to do a newsletter, be sure to be consistent in the timing of sending it out. What you don't want to happen is send it out so infrequently that alumni don't expect it when it comes, and they end up not reading it. If you consistently send it out, say, the first week of the month, alumni can anticipate that it will be coming, and they can make time to read the information. And the communication method is email. Everyone has email. Everyone on this call anyway has email. And this is a free method for chapters and a very easy way to send out information. When you send emails, be sure to have a professional signature, send your communication through a professional email address, and spell and grammar check your writing. Especially with alumni you don't know, communication should be formal, and not read as if you're talking with a longtime friend, even if they are technically your brother. But lastly, social media is a very easy way to connect with alumni to communicate out short bursts of information, and especially last-minute changes. 
Because social media is so accessible these days, it's important to not overlook the medium. Most everyone, especially as you get younger, is on at least one social media platform. It's become more popular in sending out information to people. An important thing to remember when using social media, however, is to keep up with it. It doesn't do your chapter any good to use it one semester and then forget about it for a year and then try to go back to it, switch to a new platform, or you forgot the password so you have multiple Twitter handles out there or multiple web pages. If you decide to not use a certain platform for a website or a communication any longer, you need to delete it. There are several AKSI Twitter handles out there that are just basically dead. The last update was in 2014 or something like that. It's difficult for people to know who to tag and what to follow if the account isn't current. So make sure that you're passing this information down to successive committee chairs or officers or whoever is running your social media that they have the information as it moves on. You also want to make sure that if you're designing something like a web page, that it's sustainable. If you have someone in your chapter one semester who's really, really good at coding and CSS and design, and then they leave, and you have no one else in your chapter that can do that, the website will either break or just not be updated because no one has those skills. So moving on to the next slide. Ah, that's an alumni. So as you're developing your relationships and communicating chapter alumni university news to your alumni, it's important to actually hold events with them so you have a chance to interact and build those bonds of brotherhood in person. As much as people in our generation, your generation, like to think we can develop a relationship on the Internet and through emails, there's nothing like talking to someone in person to build that rapport. Events require a lot of planning and advance notice. That's the key. To take away nothing else from this presentation, advance notice. You have to give alumni advance notice to be able to come, so that way you need to make sure you're planning your schedule and your calendar far in advance. Your schedule for the semester should be sent out to your alumni at the beginning of the semester so they can plan around it, especially if your chapter is located in a remote area that involves travel. A lot of times chapters will have successes when planning alumni events around another event as a natural draw like a homecoming or a big university event, like a sports game or something like that. These dates are already picked by universities, so the alumni have them well in advance. I mean, think about sports schedules. They're set sometimes a year or two years in advance if it's big. If you are planning around these events, you can plan a pre- or post-event to kind of pair it up, so that way alumni can have the option of doing both. This is an easy way to draw people in. They may not be able to attend other events, because they live far away and only come into town a few times a year. Basically, you want to kill two or three birds with one stone. So some great ideas that a lot of chapters will use include having alumni barbecues, game nights, dinner outings, or attending a local sports event. An important thing to consider when planning events is be sure that when you, what you pick is broad enough that the majority of people would be interested in attending. Don't pick an activity or event that only a small group of people will attend as it's a waste of your time your energy, and most importantly, your chapter funds. Anytime that you have events, one of the biggest fears you'll put that is that you'll put in all this work and no one's going to show up. That stinks. So what can you do to make sure that doesn't happen? First off, you've got to make sure that the day and time is going to work for a lot of people. If you try to plan a Thanksgiving potluck for the day before Thanksgiving, you're probably not going to get anyone to show up because everyone, including your current members, are home with their families. But don't pick a date at random. You want to do some research. Ask your alumni what works, works best for them, and work with your brotherhood, too. This is why it's important to plan far in advance so you have time to survey everyone, pick a location, get the permits you need, get the resources you need, and actually plan the event so it's a success. Now, a really good idea, write this down, everyone, is to send updated lists of who's attending from certain pledge classes to everyone and keep it rolling. Older alumni, might not want to hang out with current members as much as their pledge brothers. But then the two groups can merge and you'll have a great event. Someone who's initiated back in the 1960s might not have a lot in common with someone who's initiated in 2015. But if a bunch of their buddies are coming, then that will draw them there and that creates the natural interaction. Another great tip for getting people involved is word of mouth. As much as you send emails and post on Facebook, people will still skip past this or not open the email if it's something that just is noise in the background. 
That's just a fact of life. It doesn't mean to not do those things. You still have to do those things because sometimes that's what people need. But you need to do more on top of that. Utilize your current members and your recent graduates to individually reach out and invite others to attend. People are more likely to attend if they know that someone else is going to be there as well. But once you get one person involved, they can reach out to more brothers from their pledge class and graduating class and it becomes a ripple effect. This is true for any event, really, not just alumni events. Before we wrap up the content portion, let's recap a few of the best practices for enhancing your relationships with your alumni. One, talk to your chapter about the benefits and opportunities available to alumni. If your chapter doesn't know about who your alumni are or when they graduate or see the benefits of staying involved, they're less likely to stay connected with the chapter after they leave. It'll be hard for you to get them to come back. You have to give them an incentive to want to stay involved more than just hanging out and partying. Second, don't just ask them for money. I can tell you, I was literally driving home after graduation back to the D.C. area. I got a phone call from my university asking me to donate to their capital campaign. I mean, they did wasted no time. Now, I gave it to them because I was all on a high. I just graduated. This is fantastic. You have to give me the money that I don't have right now. But if that's all they did, eventually I would start ignoring their calls. Same with AK Sci. Your alumni should feel appreciated because you congratulate them on their accomplishments. You recognize them for the success that they've had in life. You're hosting events for them to come back to the chapter, and you're communicating with them. If they see that you're putting forth an effort to make sure that they stay involved, they'll be willing to give you money when you ask for it, but don't just ask for it. Third, you want to plan ahead. Your chapter members need time to plan for events. And we said it several times, your alumni need even more time to plan. In order to give yourself the best possible outcome, plan as far in advance as you can to give alumni and current members the time to make decisions and arrange their schedules. I went to school four hours away from where I live. If my home chapter were to invite me back for midcourt on a Wednesday with a week's notice, that's not going to happen. I have a job. I live 250 miles away. I can't just pop down for midcourt. So I need time to plan for that. But finally, don't forget about your alumni. They exist. We said there's 240,000 initiates of AK Psi in our history. There's only about a little less than 10,000 current student members, which means that there are a lot more alumni than students. So the worst way to enhance your alumni relation is to just not do anything. You want to keep them involved, keep them informed. And remind them that AK Psi is not over when you graduate. AK Psi is for life. And if you do your part, they can do their part. All right. Thank you, Mike. That was certainly a lot of information, and as you said, it's going to wrap up the content portion of the program. So now we want to hear from all of you listening in. As stated earlier, you can launch the Q&A widget from the menu doc to submit your questions. This feature will remain open even after the live webinar has ended, and if we do not get to your question, we will respond via email. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first question here, Mike, and that is, what are some more ideas of events that chapters have had success with? So the best events that I've seen are ones where the focus of the event is not necessarily on the current student members, but on the alumni, and the students are kind of tagging along for the ride. So if you're doing an alumni homecoming event or something like that, the students are also going to, that's more of a draw. Because an older alumni, like I mentioned earlier, probably isn't going to want to hang out with someone who's in their late teens, early 20s, because what they're going to talk about, especially if these alumni were initiated a long time ago before the rules were what they are today. So focusing on who is coming, incentivizing them to say, hey, if you come, you also get to hang out with these Pledge Brothers that you had, then they're going to want to be there. Additionally, if you're recognizing them or honoring an alumni for doing something really, really impressive, they will see that the chapter respects the alumni and they're more willing to give back to it. The biggest thing is the chapter needs to maintain an air of excellence about it. If alumni aren't proud of their home chapter, then they're not going to want to give money when asked. They're not going to want to come back to events when asked. And eventually the chapter is going to kind of be on an island of its own. The older chapters 
have a lot more alumni to pull from, and so you have to diversify the events you do to have success. But that being said, any chapter has alumni out there that you can pull from so long as you do the events properly. All right, next question we have here is, if we don't already have a database of alumni contact information, where can we get that information? Fantastic question. So the Heritage Center, Alpha Kappa Psi headquarters, has several staff members who can help you out. Your first point of contact is your chapter educational resource coordinator. There's three currently. There's a, the fourth one starting in January. Uh, these are your primary staff contacts, and they can help you get information on your alumni. If for some reason you want to go directly to the source, Jeff Hughes is the director of alumni development at the Heritage Center, and he can provide you with a consolidated list of your alumni too if you give him the parameters you're looking for. So let's say you are, I'll just look at this, uh, Alpha Beta, because you're at the top of my alphabet list right now. You have been around for a long, long time. You have decades of alumni, hypothetically, to pull from, so you might want to break it down based upon the event you're holding. We want alumni who were initiated prior to 1990, because we're going to be doing a gala. We want alumni who were initiated between 2005 and 2010, because they're going to be having a homecoming tailgate, those kind of things. And then Jeff or your CERC can help narrow that list or expand that list based upon what you need. Great answer. Is there anywhere else that they can look, possibly like at their university, if they're not able to get in contact with someone? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Say, is there somewhere else like on campus that they might be able to reach out to local people if the Heritage Center doesn't have any of their contact information? Oh, sure. Typically, colleges of business and universities are really, really good at keeping information about alumni because that's where a lot of their money comes from. So if you have a good relationship with your university or college of business, you can reach out to them and say, hey, we're trying to get a more alumni involvement, and they can provide you with that information. Great. And the next question we have here is, what all are alumni allowed to attend? Should we be inviting them back to chapter meetings? Should we just invite them to meetings? What all are they able to attend? So that's a very touchy question. Technically, alumni can attend anything that is an AK side event, so long as they graduated in good standing. And that means when they graduated, they didn't have any debt, that they weren't removed for disciplinary reasons, for hazing, for violating a risk management policy, or that they didn't quit. So what I would recommend, though, is that you really only formally invite your alumni back for a couple of rituals and maybe alumni-focused events. But you want to be careful to not have alumni come to every single chapter event because when all it comes down to it, it's your chapter, your current chapter. You're the ones that pay dues, you're the ones that vote, and you're the ones who are held responsible for success. It's always good to get advice from alumni, but not constantly. So my recommendation would be mid-court, court of honor, initiation. These rituals are probably the best things to get alumni involved in. Now that being said, I'm putting on my other hat now as head of the fraternity ritual team. If you invite alumni back for rituals, you have to make sure that A, they understand what the current rules are, especially for older alumni, and B, if you ask them to be part of it, that you make sure that they have a chance to come early and practice because the ritual books and the words are not exactly easy English to read. If any of you have been master's ritual before, you know how challenging that can be. Be careful about inviting alumni to social events because just like at work, when alcohol becomes part of something, that's when risk gets higher. So you want to make sure that you're carefully considering what you're inviting alumni back to, but to answer the question, they can come to anything they want. All right, next question we have here is, our chapter is a recharter, and we aren't sure how to find some of our older alumni. What advice do you have for reaching out across the different decades? That is a fantastic question, especially because I've been involved personally with several recharters of chapters that were originally chartered many decades ago, closed for whatever reason, now we're back. So I'll use Delta Zeta as an example because I was involved with their installation as a former regional director. Uh, in order to get alumni to come back to that, we went to the Heritage Center and we said, we want a list based upon what you all have of every single Delta Zeta alum since the chapter chartered to when it closed. And there was this massive Excel spreadsheet that went out. We then sorted that by year, so we could kind of bucket, okay, we have people who were initiated back in the 50s. 
let's assume that they are still alive and with us, what's probably the best way to get to them? Is the address current? Do we send them cards, emails? So you kind of bucket it like that. If you are trying to reconnect with alumni, in case that's Project Reconnect, you know, we can provide you with resources to get that information and to actually work that. But it's important that you delegate those authorities across your chapter. So it can't just be the VP of alumni relations. It has to be multiple people getting involved because otherwise it can be overwhelming. And sometimes who you're talking to and how you talk to them will need to be different depending on when they're initiated and who they are. All right, we've got kind of a follow-up question to that, and they want to know, um, can you just explain how recharters work with alumni from before their charter? Absolutely. So AKSI, as a fraternity, doesn't close chapters. We suspend charters if we have to, either for risk management reason or if membership numbers just can't get above one, or university asks us to. Sometimes that just happens. So what a recharter means is basically we take all that stuff that the original chapter has, we hold it, and then when the chapter decides, okay, we're going to reopen back up, they go through the exact same process as a brand new chapter. So to give you a great example, we as a fraternity just chartered Chi Iota at Loyola University of Maryland about two weeks ago. Brand new chapter. They have no alumni. Uh, I mentioned earlier I was involved in Delta Zeta's recharter several years ago an older chapter, lots of alumni, but they went through the exact same process. So the charter is reissued with the names of the new founders on it, but the original charter is still valid. Basically, there's two co-equal charters, and we consider it the same chapter. So uh, another good example is Alpha. Everyone knows that it was founded in 1904 at NYU, and the Alpha chapter closed at the turn of the 21st century for a couple of reasons, and then we were going to recharter it in time for our centennial back in 2004. That is still the alpha chapter. We reissued the charter, but it's a different group of names on that charter. It's not the Brooklyn Four and the Ten Founders. All right, next question we have here is, they've planned a couple events for the semester in which alumni have said they were going to come, and then only one shows up. Is there something that they're missing? They usually are giving quite a bit of notice. How do you proceed when something like that happens? That is a great question, and I, I, Sarah from Theta I believe, asked this. I see on the cool webinar app here. So, Sarah, that's, that's a great question. What you want to do is do a follow-up uh, survey to them. Say, hey, we saw you RSVP'd. Just wanted to know what happened. Did something come up? Is there something we could do? Because unless you understand why they didn't show up when they said they did, you can't address the problem. And it, I, I can tell you, it can be very disappointing to plan an event that no one shows up to. I hear you. So finding out why they didn't show up can help you adjust in the future because then you're addressing the issue. But I'm very proud of you for giving at least three weeks notice because that is the perfect amount of time to give a heads up. So good job on that. All right, next question we have is we've had a problem with alumni coming back to events and acting out or not following our risk management policies. How should we handle that? That is a question that unfortunately gets asked a lot because it's a situation that happens all the time. It's like you need a hair dryer that says don't use in the shower because you know at some point someone used it in the shower and they got electrocuted. This, this comes up more often than not, especially because alumni don't feel like they are being held accountable to the rules. At the last convention, so those of you who were there, the chapter of Congress passed rules that allowed alumni to be removed from membership by the board of directors if they have violated risk management policies that the student chapters and student members are held accountable to also. So if an alumni comes back and they hate someone or they post inappropriate material on the Internet or they sexually harass someone, any of the policies that AKSI holds you all accountable for, they're also held accountable for. In the, in the immediate term, if an alumni is acting out, just like if a student member is acting out, you kick them out. They, the alumni have no rights to do things to disrupt an event. If you have an older alumni who's coming back and saying, well, back when I was initiated, we did boom, 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 and blah, 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 and you can say, that's fantastic, brother so-and-so, thank you very much. That's not how we do that now. Be respectful. Make them understand it's their organization still, but it's your chapter, and that times have changed. Here's a, a perfect example. We were rechartering uh, a chapter back in 2007, 
a much, much older chapter. And an alumni member who was very, very wealthy came back for the installation of the chapter. He was initiated prior to AKSI becoming co-ed in 1976. So at the time, the president of AKSI, the fraternity, was Andrea Nemeth, the first female president. He, just because he hadn't been involved for a while, didn't know we were co-ed. He was very upset when he saw females putting on robes and being in the room until we told him, no, by the way, we're co-ed now. Once we explained it to him, he was fine. But the lesson we learned from that is we had to educate alumni coming back ahead of time that, by the way, this is today's AKSI. This is the 2016 AKSI. It is different from the 19 blank year you were initiated, sir or ma'am. I see Ryan asked a question on the app. The problem my chapter faces is senior retention meeting that before our chapter members even graduate, they've lost interest in the chapter, which carries on into alumni. How do you suggest reigniting the AK side passion in alumni? With you, Ryan, I think what you're talking about is like a senior slump or, hey, I have a job, I'm graduating in a month, I don't need to get involved in some kind of meetings. And if you think about it, case like a, like a tube, like bandwidth, they will fill that time with something else. So keeping them involved is tough when you are a graduating senior, but putting forth the effort when they graduate is important. Because think about this. You just graduated college. You might be moving to a new city. You're probably starting a new job. Everything is big and scary, as, as not immature, but as weird as that sounds, it's true. You're on your own for the really the first time. There's no meal plan. There's no dorm. There's no set social life. So even if someone kind of disengages as a senior, especially if it's their last semester or they're longer in a position, as soon as they see that familiar email or that familiar newsletter or those colors, blue and gold, coming across their inbox, a lot of times I've seen a lot of success in them saying, hey, this is familiar. They still want me. I'm still welcome here. And they'll get back involved because it's something that they know. That is an option. Uh, if they weren't involved because they didn't have anything to do, giving them something to do is important too. Asking them to be part of your chapter advisory board is something that chapters don't do a lot of. So the chapter advisory board is the least, besides running the foundation, least time-intensive volunteer position in AKSI. These are alumni whose job is to advise a certain officer in doing their jobs, and they all work for the chapter advisor. So the chapter advisory board has the finance advisor, who supports the treasurer, the professional programs advisor, supports the DPU professional, risk management advisor, ACR advisor, and alumni advisor. These are people that can volunteer for AKSI and feel that they have a purpose, and all of a sudden that gives them a reason to have passion. When someone feels they're needed and when someone feels that they matter, that passion will come back up to it. So I hope that answered your question. Right. Looks like we have another question here, Mike, and that's, we're a smaller, newer chapter and don't have many alumni. How can we get alumni involvement and start showing chapter brothers the benefits? That is a great question, and this is where alumni chapters come into play. So there are 45 alumni chapters all around the world. We have chapters internationally. We have one in London. We have uh, one in Southeast Asia. We have a colony in Panama. We have a ton, I mean most of them, in the U.S. So almost every single metropolitan area in the U.S. is covered by an alumni chapter. These are people who have already said, I want to be involved in AKSI. And it's a set group of people who you already have the contact information. So if you need help in finding an alumni chapter in your area, shoot me an email. It's evp at aksi.org, and I can help get you in contact with the alumni chapter in your area to get alumni to come back to your events. This is also a really good way to lower risk because we just talked about in, in a question uh, to, or two ago about alumni coming back and kind of causing a problem. Most of the time, that comes from let me come back to their home chapters, where they feel this was theirs at one point, so they can kind of do what they want. If it's an alum who is not from that chapter coming back to help out, there's that professional break, that professional distance, which really helps mitigate the risk. All right. As I'm not seeing any more questions, Mike, do you have any final thoughts, final comments to add today? 
I just want to say that I appreciate everyone being on the call tonight. I know that most of you are not graduating in December. Some of you might be. And so being an alumni really isn't crossing your mind right now, but it's very important that you maintain those relationships because you will be an AKSI alumni at one point soon. And so if your chapter starts practicing how to do alumni relations properly now, when you finally graduate and become an alum, that's so much the better. The last thing I'll say is, this is a, a ritual thing. When you have your student members who are becoming alumni and you go through the ritual that they become alumni in, it's not called demit. Demit means to quit. You are going through the graduation ceremony. The official name of the ritual is the graduation ceremony, not demit. So make sure you tell your master's of rituals that the proper term is the graduation ceremony. Otherwise, thank you all very much for your time. And Mackenzie, I will leave it to you to close up. All right. Thank you, Mike. I also want to thank all of you guys for joining in today. As you mentioned, for any follow-up questions or conversation you might have, feel free to contact Mike with the information provided on the screen. Finally, there are upcoming programmings listed on the AKSI.org website, including upcoming webinars and new e-learnings available for you to watch. Continue to check out the website and our social media as we add new resources available to you. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please send them to education at aksi.org. Again, thank you to our presenter, Mike, and thank you for joining us.